How is everyone? Hi. It's good to see all of you. I, as always, am super honored and uh, excited to get to come to you live every single week and share with you what I think are, you know, just important topics to talk about. And as most of you know, because you follow me, uh, I'm Amy of amyrout.com. I'm the author of quite a few books. Uh, this one's sitting here on my desk, so I'll hold this one up. Yes, You Can Get Pregnant is one of my very popular fertility books. I also recently wrote The Egg Quality Diet, um, Body Belief, my book on autoimmunity, and my very first book called Chill Out and Get Healthy. I've been in the field of helping women um, realize and uh, their best life and amplify their health on every level for about 20 years. I'm an acupuncturist and herbalist with a background in biology and chemistry and research science. I'm also working on a functional medicine degree right now. I have um, this amazing community of all of you. I have online coaches um, and myself and all my coaches work with women all over the world. And I also have practices in the tri-state area, New York City, Nyack, New York, and Westport, Connecticut. And I myself am there to see patients and also I have associates there. So we, meaning my team and I, are in the business of helping all of you live your best possible life. And for many of you, that means bringing through a healthy, beautiful child into your healthy, beautiful home. And, um, you know, as I often say, my job is not a positive pregnancy test. I think that piece of the puzzle is amazing to get to for many of my women. For some, it's getting the baby all the way home. I mean, for all of you, but some, some have miscarriages. I deal a lot with um, recurrent pregnancy loss and, um, and endometriosis and polycystic and all the things. But, you know, my goal is not that positive pregnancy test. It's really, my goal is getting a woman back into her power. Because what I see in this process is the power being taken away. I'm not good enough, I'm too old, I'm broken, these things aren't working for me, they're working for others, what's wrong with me? And so um, it seemed like a popular conversation that was going on last week with some of my personal coaching clients and then coaching clients that um, my team members, my, my fertility coaches on Team Amy are working with. And what, and so I said, I wanna do a live on this topic, you know, I wanna talk about this. and and what seemed to be coming up was just this kind of frustration of like, I'm doing all the things and I'm still not pregnant. What fucking gives? Like, what more could I possibly do, right? I'm doing all the things. Why is it not happening for me? And I mean, the truth is, is, is my very honest clinical experience, 20 years clinician experience uh, answer is, I don't know. I don't know the answer. Um, we can make assumptions, we can guess, but I do often get spiritual when this conversation comes up because one thing I like to remind all of you um, is it's not just about you, right? It's about what I think is divine timing and it's about the right timing for you and for this child to come through and you know, it's really about you being in your most prepared space and receiving the opportunity when it comes through. You can't control when that opportunity comes through, even if you're doing IVF. Um, I don't think you can control so much when that opportunity comes through, but what you can do is show up for yourself in that way of being prepared, in that way of nourishing yourself on all the levels, right? Mental, emotional, physical, and nutritional. Yeah, and letting it go, Ashley, I, I totally agree. So it's like, I, and I think that's like the key to it, which I always joke, if I could bottle surrender and sell it, I would, right? I probably wouldn't even sell it, I'd just give it away. I'd just wave a wand. If I could do that, I totally would. Are you kidding me? It's painful um, and it's frustrating for me when I look at some of my clients and I'm like, girl, you are fucking knocking it out of the park. You eat like a rock star. You're taking all the supplements. You're doing the things. You're journaling. You're sleeping. You're moving your body. You're, you're finding joy in your life. 
I don't know why you're not pregnant yet. And it's frustrating for me too. But what I can say is just stay the course. And you keep coming back home to you and nourishing you and knowing, like knowing you won't be forgotten, knowing your time isn't up yet, knowing in your heart of hearts that you still believe in this child, you still believe in the possibility of this child coming through. That's, sometimes that's hanging on by a thread, but that's kind of all we need at this point. And you keep doing what you do for you. Like I, I have had more than 10 women that have been in this process for more than uh, six to eight years and and then boom it just happens so what do I how do I rationalize that in my clinic my clinician mind I say okay maybe she was just one of those ones that needed like two years on the diet she was one of those ones that needed two years of recovering from the stress and the oxidation that her previous life brought on to her so two years in the healing of her gut and of her nervous system and of her hormones. Some girls need three months. Some girls need six months. Some girls don't need any months. Some girls need three years. So some of that I do think is like a biological, physiological response to the lifestyle changes. And then, you know, some of it I also look at as like such divinity there's divinity in the timing and you know a dear friend who's um a highly spiritual individual had said to me once when she was um, trying for her first and having difficulties and working with me she said one day she called me she goes oh my god i just realized that this isn't just about me this is about a relationship that i'm forming with this future child and so my job as the parent right and I, I want you all to think of yourself as that, your parents, the parents in the making, your parents to these babies up there in that spiritual realm. My job as a parent is to show up for my child, to let them know that I love them, I am supporting them, I'm creating this safe environment for them. They are safe to come through when it's right for them. And sometimes even more spiritual out there, when it's right for their siblings when it's right for their parents all the parents when it's right for the world all sorts of things and if you want to dive deeper on this I am by no means the expert but I've just been doing this a long time the book spirit babies by Walter McKitchen um, the book energetic fertility method by Nancy May Nancy May studied with Walter Walter's no longer alive Nancy is still very much alive and practicing in this space and is is powerful um, but if you want to go deeper on that level of like that spirit baby work, you know, I think it's um, really helpful. But I also think like even if the energetics don't totally speak to you and I, I respect them, I respect it if they don't. It's more about, um, I don't want to say patience because you've been waiting long enough, but it's, it's just about like cruising, I guess, at that point. That's how I would look at it. Like. Oh, and hang on till the end, too. I, I made a really special visualization, which is not a normal thing I do. I usually do meditations, but I made a really special visualization about trying um, that I'm going to share with all you guys. It's free, totally free. So just hang on. I'm going to share the link with everybody um, in, in probably about 10 minutes or so. So even if the spiritual side of things doesn't necessarily speak to you, could you then just say to yourself, all right, I'm doing all the things I could possibly do. There's nothing more I need to do. I've checked all the boxes. I'm doing the things. Be really honest with yourself. Have you really checked all the boxes? Have you looked at that emotional piece? Are there things in your relationship that still need some work? Are there things in the relationship you have with you that maybe you haven't looked at? Are, are you hitting the marks on the diet? Are you hitting the marks on the supplements? Um, are you taking time for you? downtime for you are you doing some form of mindfulness i don't care what it is if it's meditation if it's walking in nature if it's singing if it's dancing if it's journaling are you doing something to nourish you on a regular basis are you living your life for right now do you have joy in your life right now not i'll be happy when the baby comes right 
So really, first of all, be honest with yourself. Am I really doing all the things? And I'm not, I'm not one, I'm not judging. I'm, I'm just saying like, I think these are the steps. This is how I kind of look at it. Am I, am I doing all the things? Am I really doing all that? Am I honestly showing up for myself? You know, and I think we're all human and we give ourselves that humanness factor of like, okay, so it's an 80, 20 rule. 80% of the times am I, am I doing the things? that I know feel right for my body, feel good for my body, feel good for my digestion and my skin and my sleep and my joy. And, and, you know, my, my one teacher at the School of Applied Functional Medicine, well, she's the, the head of um, the school, Tracy Harrison, she says, uh, are you getting enough vitamin J, vitamin joy, you know? And she's like, you know, and I, and I do these Dutch consults all the time and I'm dig digging deep into functional medicine lab work and all that. And everyone says the same thing. You could have the perfect labs. You could have the perfect eggs. You could have the perfect diet and the perfect supplements and the, all the things. And stress could be the cause. And I, I hate saying that word because it's not that there's, you know, our fall and life can be stressful, especially like the state of the world right now and, and going through a pandemic, like life is fucking stressful and it's a lot. But are we finding ways to soothe ourselves, to soothe our souls, to have compassion for ourselves and, and meet ourselves and say, you know, good on you. Good on you. I think you're doing a great job of supporting yourself, of supporting your family, you know, your growing family, your family to be, whatever it is. You're showing up for you in so many beautiful ways. And then sure, there are moments where you're human, having a human experience, and that's okay too. Instead of the saboteur that comes in and is like, look, you're doing all these things. It's still not working. Fuck it. Fuck it all. Throw it in the towel. I'm eating McDonald's, I'm dropping the supplements, didn't work for me, burning this book, I'm unfollowing these people, I hate them all, right? That's, I don't know if there's a lot of joy in that, right? That's, that's blame, that's shame, that's hatred, that's anger. So let's honestly look at that anger. Let's look at all the pieces with like an honest lens. And, you know, and I want you to be able to also come home to the fact that like, you know, I have faith in you, I believe in you, I do. There's not a single girl that comes to me and says, I'm so getting emotional, that says that she wants a baby. And I don't look at her and say, I have faith in you. Because if you have that desire, I do believe there's a way you can connect the dots. I, I have seen it so many times and I believe it for you. But not my job to say you're not doing it right or you're doing it wrong. That's, I, I'm here to help provide tools, right? I'm a guide, I'm a support. I've been doing this a long time what's your honest truth with you? When you look in the mirror, do you like who you see? Are you proud of how you show up for you? Are you willing, and I think you are, are you willing to wait for this child to come through at the exact right time for them and for you and for this world and for all the other people in your family? Are you willing to trust your child before they even come through in, in fruition, right? Are you willing to trust in the process hope is gonna fade and it's gonna come and it's gonna go and there's gonna be moments of anger and disappointment um disappointment is a big word that came up yesterday with two of my coaching clients it is disappointing to be showing up for yourself and to get your period it is it is but i don't want you to necessarily translate that disappointment onto you solely does that make sense like honor it recognize it that's disappointing because i'm doing so much for me and i feel so ready and so yes it's disappointing right so just honor that say it out loud take a moment with it but don't let it i think seep deeper than that to this the, this like unworthiness core or this broken core right because that's where i think the disappointment can then lead to the sabotage because it it triggers it activates that maybe there's a core belief in there that's like i'm not good enough see i can do all the things and see it still doesn't work for me you know and instead just say it's normal to have disappointment when you're trying for something that you want isn't that the most normal thing on the planet a hundred percent so can i allow myself to feel disappointed and still feel hopeful can I have both emotions at the same time? Absolutely. Right? So it's, I think 
you're doing all the things you're still not pregnant that's super frustrating another another thing i'll bring up to my girls though is i just say so are you done then that's it you're gonna you're closing the door on that baby oh god no i'm like okay well then you're still here so you're still here so just own that too you're disappointed you're frustrated but you're still here and you're not leaving just just call it out and if you're into the spiritual side of things if you're into that spirit baby work start talking to your baby hey mama's ready i'm ready i've got all these things lined up look at how fun this life is down here when are you ready to come through look at all the love look at all the things right start inviting and ask if there's anything else i need to be doing could you guide me could you give me a sign could you support me is there anything i'm missing and most of the time too if we take some time to be quiet and we just take some deep breaths, hands over our heart or wherever feels comfortable. Am I doing everything I possibly can? Is there something that I'm not looking at? Chances are the first thing that pops into your head is the thing. And again, I'm not here to point out things you're doing wrong or things you're missing. I don't believe that. I always believe we're exactly where we're supposed to be and that life is unfolding exactly how it is, even if we don't like it in the moment. But listen to what you hear. Is there something, what else is in the way? I ask that of my clients all the time. What do you think? Because from my perspective, you're, you got it all, girl. You're lined up. What do you think it is? And a lot of times it's like, you know, my relationship could use work or... You know, I'm really unhappy at my job or and I fucking hate it and I've been waiting to quit it because I'm waiting to take advantage of maternity leave okay so that's a lot of pressure to put on the baby you know like oh, let's think about that let's look at that or you know what um I really miss x y and z in my life and I've cut it out and that was a big part of my joy okay so we're we're limiting joy in our lives right and so taking time to listen like are you moving slower in your life did you create space for this child you know I, and that came up in a conversation with a client yesterday where um i just said to her i really want you to think about how much you give away of yourself stop giving so much of yourself away to your job to other people in your life and start thinking about like what am i keeping for me like i want you to have extra for you I don't want us at like a zero point at the end of every day right that we've just given it all away I want us to end our day in like a plus 30 category right if there's a hundred like at least a plus 30 maybe a plus 50 that like and this is for me because I am worthy of my energy and my love and this extra energy and love is what's gonna make this baby right so because a lot of times too women come to me and they're doing all the things they got their checklist they got their spreadsheets this is when they take that supplement and they am and the pm and they got their whole fertility story outlined in a spreadsheet and it's highly that's a lot of control that's the first thing i see there's a lot of control and a lot of energy being spent on you know and like it's like stakes in the ground this are all the things i am doing where is my baby and it's like that doesn't seem joyous to me at all some people love charts makes them happy i don't work like that but i respect it um i'm a bit all you know throw it at the wall and see what sticks kind of girl but um you know where is the joy in all the things am i doing all the things just for baby or am I doing all the things because now I sleep better, my poop's better, I feel less bloated, my period when it comes is so much easier, um, I'm happier in my life, I love the way my skin looks, I love the way my hair looks. Is that why you're doing the things or are you just doing the things just for baby? And so it's, it's a good thing to reflect upon, it's a good thing to tune in. Is there anything else I'm missing? You know, I always hear for me, it's like, slow down. Slow down a little bit more. Take some deep breaths. Trust in the process. Trust in the support and the love that surrounds you. Trust in the desire that is there. It's the trust piece. And I think like Ashley, what you said earlier of like the surrender is the key. 
We can't surrender unless we trust. Think about that. Would you ever like fall back backwards on the trampoline if you didn't, you know, didn't see it? You know, it's like having that kind of blind faith requires trust. So do you trust that you were called to desire this baby for a reason? And do you trust that the baby's going to come through at their right time? And do you trust that it's about you showing up for you, you getting back into your power, you taking care of you, you nourishing you, you finding joy in your life without the baby right now? The joy along the way. My spiritual teacher, Abraham, always says that. It's about the joy along the way. And she also says the key to enjoying and flowing with your life is letting go of the oars. Just being in the boat and letting it take you where it takes you versus controlling on so tightly. That's the piece that, you know, is uh, can be holding us back. And so uh, without further ado, I actually just want to share with you Facebook. I'm going to post it right here. Um, my free visualization. It's if you go to amyraup.com slash free visualization, you will get access to that um, trying visualization. And I think you will like it. I hope you will. Um, this is all me. Someone says, beautiful woman, you look great. Oh, you're sweet. Um, I needed this. Thank you for coming live. I wish you were here, Georgia. Um, what if I had three losses of the in supplemented, rolled out hormonal physical causes of the losses, committed myself. I just can't feel like I risk another loss. Um, you know, I feel ready to move on to donor eggs or embryos, but it's so tough to know if it's the very best choice. And I, I like, I'm not going to answer like specific to your case because I think this isn't the time for that. But it's just that thing too. What I say to my girls is like, when you know, you know, like why not start the donor process and continue to unpack things. The one thing I would also say to you is, have have you checked out Pregmune? Um, so that is the one piece of clinical advice I'm going to give you. Um, I don't know where to type here. Um, where do I type? So we're Pregmune. I, I can't, Melody, I can't seem to type right here, but P R E G M U N E. It's um, really good. It, it, it tests for a lot more than probably your doctors have tested for the reasons of the losses. Three consecutive losses is not all egg quality. Never is. Never is. There's something autoimmune going on. So I would strongly recommend that. Um, or you guys are sweet, but you know, so just to, but to think about too, of like, when, you know, you know, um, so I have some girls when they know, they know of like, I'm going to donor. I always tell the story. There's like three girls in my practice that went to donor and I was like, I wasn't ready. I was like, you got this, you can do this. But I understood their level of readiness. They were like, I'm done. I'm done with the worry and the pressure of it being my own eggs. And and full on. I mean, I still got to prepare that vessel. That vessel is still really important. So when you know, you know. I've had girls go to surrogate. I've had girls go to adoption. When you know, you know. I've had girls say, you know what? I'm going to close the door on this. I had a girl just do that recently. On her 46th birthday, she emailed me. I'm closing the door. It didn't work out, babe. Love you. I love the work we did together. She broke up with me. Um, and we did create one healthy embryo at her at the age of 45 but they transferred it and didn't take which was devastating but we and, you know we got i felt like we had a win in there even so and so she felt she felt proven in a sense um and she said you know and then at 46 and a half i got an email that was like holy fuck i'm pregnant what and then at 47 she just gave birth to a healthy baby girl yeah so natural pregnancy after giving up with the, that speaks kind of to the surrender piece but um, I supported her. I was upset. I didn't, I wasn't ready to close that door, but, um, when she knew, she knew, and she was floored to get pregnant naturally at 46 and a half and have a baby at 47. Um, she messaged me. She's like, uh, birth at 47. No fucking joke. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but she's doing great. Everybody's happy. Everybody's healthy. And that's all that matters. Um, to have another girl, you know, second failed IVF in her mid forties. Uh, she's just about to turn 45 and same thing she was like i'm doing all the things uh, i don't understand why this ivf isn't working you know my doctors are like that's it you're done donor egg the next month she got pregnant naturally we just found out yesterday the nuchal everything's healthy baby's healthy 12 weeks she's 12 weeks pregnant um 
so but there was a surrender piece in all of those too which i, I had one girl go with a surrogate after multiple losses um the day they signed the the legal contract with the surrogate she found out she was pregnant naturally she hadn't been pregnant in probably a year and she any previous pregnancy she was miscarrying carried this baby to term i mean you know so i always do joke about that that surrender piece but so sometimes it is that complete letting go but in all those cases too the letting go did not equate to um sabotaging their health they all still chose to live this lifestyle that i put them on because they felt their best and so if you can work on that before the throwing in the towel the give up piece of just like i'm doing this because i feel good because my body shows me I feel good. I'm going to do it for that reason. And I'm going to let the baby come through when the baby is meant to come through. And I'm going to trust in the guidance that comes to me. And I'm going to trust in the support that surrounds me. And I'm going to trust in my intuition, my divine feminine energy. When I know, I know. So there you have it. I'm going to leave you guys with that. Um, go check out the free visual visualization. amyrop.com slash free visualization. And it is something special I did make for you all. And uh, yeah, I love you guys. And I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you real soon. Okay, I'm gonna go take a shower because, as you can tell, <laughs> Amy has not showered yet today. Okay, ciao for now, my loves. Have a great day. <laughs>